reading the news headlines, you may think that the era of moving overseas and using offshore companies is over, and that zero tax is dead. Today, I'm going to update you on changes that prove onshore is the new offshore, and why tax-friendly countries are bigger than ever. I'm going to share with you a couple of different changes in the global tax landscape recently, and I'm going to tell you how I think people are misunderstanding how some of these things actually work and misunderstanding opportunities where they actually could dramatically lower their taxes by moving overseas. And I'm also going to talk to you about some trends that I see upcoming. One of the first things that you've heard a lot about in recent years is what's called the global minimum tax. This is where basically companies would have to pay a minimum 15% tax no matter where they're based. And it was targeted at companies like Facebook or Apple that move their operations to places with very complicated structures in a way that you as a small business really can't do as easily because you don't have like offices and stuff and IP all around the world. And all those companies now would have to pay 15% somewhere. That basically be a top-up apparatus. And what many people don't realize is this is not the end of what we here at Nomad Capitalists do or what you can do if you're watching. It really doesn't impact you because yes, you see countries like the UAE, which are now imposing a 9% tax on onshore companies to kind of get in the game of some kind of minimum tax. And yet, you know, free zones remain exempt. Places like Hong Kong have long had taxes domestically, and yet there are ways you can reduce that tax to zero if you're not in Hong Kong. And so the global minimum tax affects big, big companies, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. There will still be free zones, and I think there will be more free zones coming up in different places. Some of those places you might not be as comfortable with. There are some very emerging countries in Eastern Europe and even as far as Africa that are saying, hey, here's a special free zone. And some of those free zones target very specific types of companies. But you've also got free zones in places like the Gulf that just target anyone who has a company that can be run online. And you can still go and pay zero tax. You will still have these two-part systems like Hong Kong. And I almost think that, not to get into the geopolitics, but Hong Kong being part of China, which some people are afraid of, you almost have a certain protection in that the same way the United States has pushed back on sharing information, the same way demands from other countries with certain banks around the world, certain countries around the world, like the U.S. just doesn't follow the same rules. The U.S. is the largest tax haven with places like Delaware and Wyoming while it goes and beats up and makes demands of other so-called tax havens. And I almost kind of wonder if, you know, having an country of equal heft behind Hong Kong allows them to have a two-part system for longer than some kind of smaller country. And so global minimum tax, not an issue. Now, we do talk about how things eventually, you know, trickle down. I've talked about the alternative minimum tax in the U.S., which was designed for very, very wealthy people to not be able to have endless deductions. And it became where it eventually, by not being indexed to inflation, affected a heck of a lot of people that were relatively middle class. And so you certainly could have uh, a time when due to inflation, and, and more so in this case, just kind of lowering the minimum threshold, maybe your company does get swept up. Maybe there's a time when the threshold goes down to $50 million or $100 million in revenue, and you've got a really successful e-commerce company. Now you're sucked in. I think that's a while coming. I think you'd see more pushback on that. There, I think there will always be somewhere to go, and depending on what kind of business you'll have, uh, it may or may not be possible to go to some new far-flung jurisdiction. The cool thing then would be, I think you'll probably see countries offering incentives where they'll say, hey, we'll give you a residence permit. Hey, pay X amount in tax and we'll, we'll give you citizenship potentially. And you'll be able to shop around for other benefits as countries have to be competitive because if everyone's charging you 15%, that 15% is still a lot less than what you might pay living in a place like the US or Canada where you run your business and you have a lot of restrictions taking the money out and all that kind of stuff. But I think that is certainly far away. And so the global minimum tax, people say, oh, you know, tax-free companies offshore are gone. I really think that for most people, tax-free companies are good in order to have tax neutrality. Certain people may want to live in countries where they pay a little bit of tax. So someone might set up their company in a tax-free jurisdiction, and then they might go to Italy and pay a 100,000 euro flat uh, lump sum tax every year. And so, you know, if their company in a tax neutral jurisdiction makes, you know, 2 million euros, their effective tax rate's 5%. They're paying tax. It's just easier not to pay at the corporate level and to pay it where they actually live, where they're actually using the services. And so I think the global minimum tax doesn't have the impact that the media has made it out to. Now, a second thing that is more of a niche discussion, it's one we've talked about for years, is less territoriality 
in taxes. And so Costa Rica, people have said in the expat community, oh, they keep talking in Costa Rica about getting rid of what's called territorial tax system. A territorial tax system is where uh, if you have a job or you run a company locally, that pays tax at the local rates. If you have you know, stock investments locally or real estate investments, you know, whatever is within the territory, within the country, you pay tax at whatever their rates are, and it's not zero tax. But if you have income somewhere else, let's say you have investments in another country, or the best example of how this could be taxed at zero would be you have a company in a jurisdiction at zero tax, and then you live in a jurisdiction uh, where the company that's overseas is not taxed. Now, there are certain rules to territoriality. It's not always just as straightforward as the, the company's overseas. If you're working there, there's many different criteria to look at. But Costa Rica, they've talked on two occasions about getting rid of that. At last notice, that was vetoed this year. And so all the scuttlebutt of Costa Rica becoming tax-friendly, we've been through this twice. It seems it's now uh, vetoed. There was talk in Malaysia a couple years ago, oh, it's not so friendly anymore. Malaysia had talked about basically removing certain territoriality and moving to kind of like a remittance system, which still would have been for high earners relatively low tax because you basically could have earned that, you know, two million overseas and brought in 200,000 to live on. And, you know, you might have paid $50,000 in tax. So, you know, two and a half percent tax rate. You'd almost be more frustrated by the paperwork. However, that didn't come to pass. And so Malaysia still works. Now, keep in mind, this territoriality only affects people even in a bad way when they are actually tax resident in the country. And so if you're just wintering in Costa Rica or Malaysia and you have a more significant place where you're living and maybe liable for tax, you're not, it's not even an issue. What we're talking about here is once you're tax resident living there for a majority of the year in most cases. Now, the one that did lose territoriality recently is Thailand, where they're changing to this kind of remittance system, kind of sort of like a non-DOM regime in Europe, where if you live in Thailand, it used to be you could bring in money you've earned in previous years, but you can't bring in money you've earned this year. Now they're saying any money you bring in will be taxed at the normal rates of like 5 to 35%. And so depending on how much you need to live on, the 35% starts at about $140,000. You can still earn the money offshore and you can bring in what you need to live on. And so there's that arbitrage opportunity of what's your cost of living versus how much do you actually make. That did not come to pass in Malaysia. Costa Rica would have been a different system. In Thailand, that it's changing. So one of those three is actually changing. And you've got other countries like Georgia and Panama, uh, that have continued to do that and continue those territorial uh, regimes. And so people who are reading this stuff in the expat circles about, you know, breathlessly talking about tax exemptions are ending. And sometimes, you know, they really push back on us. Like people, people leave comments and, and they, it's like the research team has to be asked, like, like, what happened? This guy's really confident. It's like, no, they're just reading some breathless commentary somewhere. And so, you know, I get an interesting email from a gentleman uh, a couple months ago. His name is Dan. And he said, you know, when I first talked to you guys a couple of years ago, I, I figured, you know what, I won't pay these guys their fee. I'll try and figure this stuff out on my own. And he says, it's three years later, and I wish I would have just paid it a fee because it would have been gotten done a lot faster and I would have saved myself a lot of headaches. The challenge that I see with people reading in the newspaper about global minimum tax, territorial tax, countries changing their tax systems, yeah, countries are changing. Portugal is changing their tax system. They're going to be getting rid of the NHR system and grandfathering people in. Stuff changes. you got to keep up to date with it. Uh, it is a challenge. And so here's a guy, Dan, who you know, spent close to three years longer than he had to. And he said, I would have saved money in the long run by hiring an expert. What we have at Nomad Countless is a network of people all around the world. We have attorneys. We have estate agents. We have accountants. We have all sorts of people, company formation people, all that work with this to make your holistic plan. None of this stuff works in a vacuum. Global minimum tax doesn't work, it doesn't work in a vacuum. Territorial tax doesn't work in a vacuum. You want someone who understands the global landscape and who's not just reading what people are saying in an expat form or what they read in a newspaper. Go to nomadcapitalist.com and Dan unfortunately learned the lesson the hard way. Sounds like Dan is doing well now, but Dan spent a lot more money making mistakes than he could have by just paying someone to come in and help him. And it generally doesn't mean just going to Costa Rica and getting residence. That's one piece of the puzzle. It could be one out of eight, one out of 10, one out of 15 pieces of your puzzle is Costa Rican residence. 
that doesn't solve your problem. You have to have all the pieces of the puzzle to make sure you're fully compliant and that you get the benefits. And so the other thing that I see when people say, oh, zero tax is going away, is when we talk about tax-friendly countries, where there are incentives for foreigners, somebody local says that's not how it works. That's not how it works for them. And so the tax-free countries we talk about in Europe are generally open to people who either aren't citizens or haven't lived there in a long time or one or the other. So from Ireland, Portugal's going away, but Ireland, you know, Switzerland, Italy, Greece, Malta, uh, Cyprus, there's others that have incentives for certain you know, people. Yeah, if, if you just uh, move to one of those countries and you're a local, you know, my Swiss citizen friends, they pay the regular taxes. And in their case, they live in a pretty tax-friendly part of the country. It's not so bad. But if you, know, if you just move to Zurich, you're going to pay a lot more tax than someone who goes through the special exemption for foreigners. Uh, and so, you know, do you want to get Swiss citizenship? I mean, again, there's, there's a lot of things that go into the, this because if you get the Swiss citizenship, you can't. You know. So none of this stuff happens as a vacuum is the point. Those are three things that people are talking about with headline tax rates, a change in expat tax deals with territoriality, and the minimum, uh, global, global minimum tax. People often also don't understand tax conditions. And so we've talked before. I have a home in Colombia. I go there for a couple weeks a year. I obviously spend more time in other places than I do in Colombia, and I'm liable for paying tax. Even if that tax rate is zero or a low tax rate, I'm liable for tax somewhere else. And so because I'm not in Colombia, because I don't trigger their tax residence, because their tax residence is harder to trigger than a Western country's, people say, well, but you live in Colombia, you have a property in Colombia. Aren't their taxes crazy? Yes. For the same reason that if you went as a tourist to Colombia, for three weeks, you wouldn't pay taxes, would you? You'd go back to your home and you'd pay taxes there. That's the same reason I don't pay. And so if I wanted to move to Colombia full time, and listen, there may be a situation having homes around the world that maybe that would be the safest place in some particular black swan event and I would go there and, and maybe there's some conditions under which I would pay their tax. But if you're just there for you know three weeks, very few ways you could get sucked into a tax net for, for spending that little time. So people don't even often understand the ways that you can be tax resident. The stuff we're talking about, again, with that territoriality is based on, you know, are you a tax resident? And so we talk about, let's say, my trifecta method. You can live in, you know, certain countries three or four months a year. If you've got the proper plan and all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and you've got the bespoke kind of plan that we offer, I mean, you may have no tax obligation anywhere. Now, you probably want to have a tax resident somewhere but again, that could be a de minimis amount of tax. And so if you understand the conditions, if you understand it goes beyond headline tax rates, you'll understand that there are still opportunities to reduce your tax. Not always to zero, but you know, for me, one of the big things that I like about you know, tax-friendly places is just less paperwork. I don't mind paying something. So you look at like a, a system like Italy, just send us the 100,000 euros. Now, Italy has other uh, tax exemptions if you make less, they're a bit more confusing. But if you're a very high earner, you just send Italy the 100,000, you're done, right? It's up to you to make that tax rate as low as a percentage of your income as possible. Roger Ver came to Nomad Capitalist Live this year and said, there's years he stays in St. Kitts. He's a tax resident in St. Kitts and Nevis because he spends the time there. He has the citizenship, but some years he just spends six months or more. And he says, the best thing is you don't even have to file uh, a tax return. There's nothing to do. Like someone I had escaped from, uh, from the real prison, which is the entire United States, where they kind of treat you like a uh, tax livestock over there. And finally, I was free. I was a citizen of St. Kitts. There's no personal income tax. There's no capital gains tax. I don't even have to file a tax return at the end of the year. It's really, really a, a wonderful, amazing feeling. Now, Roger Ver gave up U.S. citizenship. And so if you're an American, you're still going to file a tax return in the U.S. He solved that problem by giving up the U.S. citizenship. That's obviously a bold step. But everybody else who's not American, at least for now, you could just move to St. Kitts and Nevis or any other of these places where you have no tax return to file because they don't have tax, like in St. Kitts and Nevis, or because, hey, you just file something you know, quick and, and down and dirty and hey here's my hundred thousand or here's what you know gibraltar has a system for example here's my fixed amount of money or you know um, jersey's a bit more complicated but there's plenty of countries uh, and territories where the paperwork is the issue if it's like hey i don't mind paying a hundred thousand but i don't want to have to have like convoluted stacks of paperwork and worrying i made a mistake that's really a bigger issue I think, and if you can solve that problem, that's as much as is solving the tax. So there's always gonna be tax-friendly places. And so we talked about St. Kitts and Nevis and other islands. 
uh, Antigua, as long as you have proper planning for your company, and others, you know, Cayman Islands. In the Cayman Islands, it's like part of the culture. We talk about culture for years. Like, we don't do direct tax. The UAE, for personal income, that's gonna continue. Free zones for tax, you know, with some conditions. Uh, some countries are gonna stay territorial. I like smaller countries, but listen, maybe there's a, a criteria in your particular case for having your company incorporated in a country with a little bit more heft geopolitically to where they're gonna defend a tax regime. You know, if you're within the European Union and you're on the white list, I mean, there's certain things you can do there. So I just think there's so many opportunities that are dependent on your own particular situation. A European citizen has some opportunities and yet doesn't have others. You know, Americans have few opportunities, but there's still plenty. And so I think that more and more countries may move to a kind of European model where there'll be fewer opportunities to pay absolutely zero tax, but with the ties going to this kind of quasi non-dom system, uh, I think you'll open up more places you might have more places where it's like, hey, if you're a very high earner, you can pay something like three or 4%. And I think that probably encourages more people to live this lifestyle because right now people just say, I don't wanna to move to Dubai, I don't wanna to move to the Gulf, I don't wanna to move to a place like that. They don't realize there's territorial tax, tax exempt, non dump you know, special regime systems. There's all kinds of other ways to legally reduce your tax. But once you have more of these countries opening up models, I mean like Italy, very high tax country, but they realize they're losing population we need to bring some, some money into this joint. And so I think you'll see places where you can go and pay some, you know, it may not be zero. Zero will be an option. But I almost think that getting beyond zero gives people this psychological, you know, idea that, hey, I can live better. If I can pay 3% of what I make, or what you make in this case in Italy, you know, that might be better for a lot of people. And on top of that, you know, if I can live in Ireland and work towards citizenship in five years, and that has a similar system to what Thailand does, and the top rate's not that much different, if I'm, if I'm basically spending everything that I make, you know, and get citizenship, you know, I can't get that in Thailand. I mean, that opens it up an opportunity. So now Thailand's competing with even some European countries. Italy, I can live there, I can pay 100,000 euros, I can get citizenship in 10 years. There's a language to learn there. But even if countries start to pull away, that's gonna expose other countries that have kind of similar systems that maybe aren't zero, but that offer other things that are worth it. If, if Italy said, hey, give us a million dollars and we'll give you Italian citizenship, people would pay it. Well, that's how much tax, give or take, you'll pay in 10 years of living there under their lump sum system. And so you don't have to pay it all up front and you get to live there and you get to enjoy if that's the kind of place you want to live. So zero tax will remain and yet you're going to see more opportunities open up that are very low tax going forward. Don't believe all the headlines you see.